Jobs in Qatar, Expectations versus the Reality. By the way, did you ever know that what you expect as you're coming to this country is not what you find? Jobs in Qatar, Expectations versus the Reality. By the way, did you ever know that what you expect as you're coming to this country Tune in to this video, let us try to see what are some of these expectations that are passing the reality. Hi guys, thank you so much for coming back to this channel. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Don't forget to click on the bell icon. You'll be notified when I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching videos on this channel. Thank you so much for the support. For the returning subscribers, Thank you so much for the work. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for the support. But remember, the new subscribers, don't fail. Consider subscribing. Support this channel by subscribing. It is the only platform we can try to share out ourselves. Share the information. In today's video, we want to look at the reality versus the expectation. Or you can do it the vice versa and say the expectations versus the reality in the job for the jobs in Qatar or jobs generally in the Gulf countries. What are we talking about? What are those expectations we, we talk about? Remember, when we are discussing the expectations, we shall look at two sides. We shall look at the expectations uh, for the employer, the person who is sponsoring you. Then we look at the expectations. Are you the person who is the employee? You become the employee. The person who is going to do the work is the employee. The person who is sponsoring you is your employer. Remember, in the video we talked about the types of visas. We talked about the visas. And most of the works that come to the Gulf countries are what we call the work visas. And work visas are mainly, are mainly sponsored by a person who is going to give you that job or that particular company that is going to give you that work. That's why they're called the work visas. And they're normally, uh, they're normally moved on with a contract. You need to sign a contract between the two. It can be after for one year, it can be for two years, it can be for an unlimited contract of five years, depending on what kind of mutual agreement or that is being reached between the two parties. That is what we are trying to talk about. But let us not try to go into that so much. Today's video, we want to look at the expectations versus the reality for the jobs in Qatar. What do you expect? What does your employer expect from you? Those are two things that should come in your mind. Those are two things that you should think about. Remember, when we are being recruited from our own countries, when that hiring company or when that manpower company looks up that post for you. Yes, you'll be hired, but you have expectations before you come. You'll say, I need this kind of job. I need this job that can give me this amount of money. Yes, that is the opportunity that has come on your table. But remember, even the person recruiting you has an expectation in the person is recruiting. Remember, before I told you that sometimes the opportunity will not look for you, but you look for the opportunity. How do you look for that opportunity? By being well prepared for that opportunity, such that by the time that opportunity comes on your table, you are the first person to take up the opportunity. And the two important documents for you should have is the passport and your mindset. You are being included? Yes. Are you ready to take on that work? Are you ready to take on that work? Yes. In this video, by the end of this video, we shall have a clear picture of what it is, on what you should do, how you should go along with it, or how, by answering a few questions, how, when, when, whom, you get an answer for it. Let us look at the expectations of your employer. 
First of all, his main goal, maybe he has a company, a big company. He may want a, uh, a security guard. He may want a cleaner. He may want uh, a technician. He, he expects that person to perform his duty to the expectations. If you agreed in the contract that you're supposed to work for 12 hours, it will be 12 hours. And if you agreed in the contract that you'll be working for 12 hours and you'll be paid this amount of money, that is what he expects. That you work for the 12 hours and he pays you the same amount of money that agreed. If he said, I'll be giving you accommodation, yes, he expects you to do the work and gives you accommodation. All summary. But remember, it is not some employee or some companies, they expect for you to have an extra skill. Extra skills that you should have. What are these skills that we are talking about that your employer may expect from you? For that job that is recruited you, for that position that is recruited you, for, recruited you. You are a cleaner, you are a security guard, you, you are a technician, you work in the hospitality department. Some of the life skills that you need to have, the extra skills we are talking about, for example, good communication. How better, how better can you communicate to a client, to communicate to another person? Are you presentable enough? That is also another skill. Are you literate? Can you read and write? Can you write your name? Can you write something? That will normally be a skill. How better you can present yourself? It's very important. So, when you look at your employer, you normally look at some of those kids that you're supposed to have. But what about you? You also have expectations. Because that's the reason why you accepted the position. You expect good salary, yes, the good salary you agreed upon in the contract. You expect good accommodation, yes, you agreed upon the accommodation. But still, you don't know how many people you're going to sleep in the room. Because it's, going to be, it's not going to be a self-contained accommodation. You're not the only person in, 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 in the company that is being located for that position. Yes, you expect the money, the salary to come in time. Those are some of the expectations. And you may have expectation that by the end of it all, some of them have expectations of career development. Someone may wake up and, think, and, and just say, yes, out of this I'm able to develop myself to go to another level. That is also an expectation for some of you or some of us out there. Hope we are on the right page. So those are some of the things that we get to put in mind as we are being recruited uh, by the manpower companies or depending on any way that you came in this company. That is how we are. Those are some of the expectations that we have. And indeed, that is part of the, our goals we have. The short term and the long term goals that we are supposed to fulfill at a given period of time. But the other point that comes in, yes, the expectations are there, but what are the realities of life? Most important at all times, jobs in the Gulf, it is so much to focus on the realities of life than focusing on the expectations. You may have a higher expectations and you get disappointed in one way or the other. So it's better, to my advice, it's better you concentrate so much on the expectations, on, on the realities of life. Because it's only the reality of the mind, the realities of the life that is going to wake up your mind. When they awake up your mind, then you'll be able to achieve your expectations in any goal that you feel you want. It may be in a short-term goal, in a long-term goal, it will be the only way because you'll find a lot of you know 
you will find a lot of dissatisfaction with some of the things that will be done in any one or the other. So let us try to go through some of the realities of life that you happen to find. One, you may go to a company. The company is not cooking for your food. They will give you, let's say they are giving you the food allowance. What are you going to do? Are you going to eat in a hotel? They may be very expensive for you. So that means you need to get cooking utensils. You need to start preparing food for yourself. But remember, if from your country you use not to cook for yourself, this is the time that you have to apply a life skill to start cooking for yourself as a means of survival. Reality number two, they used to wash for you. Let's say you left your mother in your country, you left your wife in your country, you left your family in your country. They used to wash your clothes. But this is where you come to a company. They don't have washing machine for laundry. That means you need to do the laundry yourself. You need to wash for yourself. Because you need to be clean. You need to be presentable. Your employer will expect you to be presentable wherever he posts you to work. But how are you going to be presentable when you have dirty uniforms? When you're not hygienic? So that means that one, how do you go about with that reality? Is you need to start washing for yourself. It doesn't matter how you do it, but you know you have to wash for yourself. Expectation number three, we look at salary. Yes, you may expect a salary will always come on the same date. And you're disappointed at one way or the other. At some time, the salary does not come in time. There may be delays in one way or the other, which you may not understand. And your employer will not tell, able to, to explain to you to the, the delays because he has with the contract. So meaning that you have to, to wait, to hold on until the money comes. And when the money comes, that's when you can try to adjust whatever you're planning to do with that money. Something else, we have another reality that you'll find is accommodations. You'll expect to sleep one in a room with a double sofa, with a, with a TV. No. The reality is that you'll find yourself sleeping in people like eight people or four people depending on any arrangement or depending on the organization that is available by that company. You might find yourself sleeping in a room with the same luggage, with the same cooking utensils, which is quite actually true. So how are you going to go with that? You need to persevere. First of all, what you need to put in your mindset, you need to know what is the primary reason. What is, why am I here? Why did I accept this opportunity? Why did I accept this job? Why did I accept to come here? That will be the only thing that you have to put in mind. It is the only drive that will push you to move on. And that is exactly what it is. So you'll find in the room, you go back to the secondary level, a boarding secondary level, where you're sleeping eight in the room. If you're so lucky enough, you may sleep with the same people of the same origin. If you're not so lucky enough, you may find sleeping with other people of the same origin, of different origins, and we all have different cultures in many or the other. So you need to adjust. You need to adjust because now you're facing the reality. How do, you, how do you live with that reality to see that you make yourself better for tomorrow? Is you adjust and move within the reality and try to fix yourself back to the order. Another, expect, another reality of life is transportation. You may be used, you may sign that, you sign your contract, I'm supposed to work for 12 hours. But one or two or two, three or four months or one or two times there are delays in transport. The, two, uh, the 12 hours become the 13 hours, become the 14 hours. Are you going to quit your job? No. Are you going to quit your job? No, you're not going to quit your job. Because now you are facing the reality of it all. If you're so lucky now, that company will pay overtime. 
If you're not lucky enough, the company will not be paid overtime. What are you going to do? Are you going to quit? You have two choices. Either to persevere or to quit the job or to resign or to move on or to get yourself back to order. To put yourself back to order so that you can move and fulfill your short-term and long-term dreams that you have for you. Still, we shall look at another reality of it all. Requirements. That some of those requirements that you need to buy for yourself, the company will not give you the requirements. The company may give you a mattress and a bed, but it may not give you a bed sheets. So what are you going to do? Are you going to sleep on an empty mattress? No. That means you'll have to look for a mattress, you'll have to look for bed sheets to cover yourself. If you're lucky enough and they give you a blanket, yes, that is okay. But remember, if they don't give you, how are you going to sleep? It is you are going to improvise within yourself and have that blanket for yourself. So you are facing the reality of life. You are facing the reality of it all than what you expected, that everything will be on a silver bread. So sometimes that is what normally happens. So I want to let you know, are you cooking for yourself? Are you washing for yourself? No. It is quite very important. So these are some of the expectations versus the reality. Hope guys will try to share up something. Thank you so much for always keeping to this channel. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate. Thank you so much. We appreciate returning subscribers. Thank you so much, guys. I like that. Thank you so much for the support. Remember, we are looking at a load to 1,000 subscribers. Please, guys, support this channel by giving us a thumbs up, share, so that we can reach a road of 1,000 subscribers. For the new subscribers, please, guys, thank you so much. Subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to click the bell icon because it's the only way that you can be notified when I upload a new video. Thank you so much. Let's hope see you again in the next video as we are trying to discuss more of life and how probably we can try to move in, especially if we're in these Gulf countries.